To my YouTube listeners, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. It'll make a big difference for the Hasidic Story Project. This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. I wanted to record a story last week, which was Cholomoid Pesach, and I didn't get a chance to record it. So I have a longer story than normal for you to make up for last week. Even though it wasn't Rosh Chodesh, the Baal Shem Tov called the Hasidim to a Ferbrengen in the normal way that he would have a Ferbrengen on Rosh Chodesh and not minding gathering together with the Rebbe and drinking and singing and sharing Divrei Torah, the Hasidim happily got together and joined the Baal Shem Tov. <laughs> and at some point during the Ferbrengen, the Baal Shem Tov hushed everybody down, quieted the room, and said, let me tell you a story. As everybody knows, every 50 years, the heavenly court chooses a tzaddik to be the tzaddik yesod olam, a tzaddik that can uphold the foundations of the earth. And 50 years had passed, and it was time for the heavenly court to choose a new tzaddik yesod olam. And after going through every Jewish man, woman, and child in the entire world, looking for one uncorrupted tzaddik, someone who had never done a transgression in their whole life, Someone who could be trusted with this responsibility, the heavenly court came across a tzaddik whose name was Reb Moshe. And they decided that this Reb Moshe, who sat in a little hut, sunken under the ground, learning Torah day and night, would be the next tzaddik Yisod Olam. But as everybody knows, in order to have good, you have to have evil. And in order to have light, you have to have darkness. Because if everything was good and there was no evil, we wouldn't even know what good meant. And if everything were light and there were no darkness, we couldn't appreciate the light. And so, Zelu Matze, this opposed to this, Hashem created. And just like there's a tzaddik in the world, there's evil energy in the world. And so the accusing angel in heaven said to the heavenly court, This is not fair. This Reb Moshe has sat in his hut and lived an isolated life his whole life. Since he was a kid, he was able to sit and learn Torah. He never had to work. He never really faced any challenges in life. So why would you choose him to be the tzaddik yesod olam? So the heavenly court says to the prosecuting angel, So what do you want to do? And the prosecuting angel says, I want to be sent down there to earth and test this Moshe. And if he passes my test, then I'll agree that he becomes the tzaddik yesod olam. And if he doesn't, well then he deserves the punishment that he gets. And so they thought it was fair, and they allowed the prosecuting angel to come down into this world. <laughs> And he goes to Reb Moshe's hut, and there was a light coming out of the hut. Such holiness that the prosecuting angel couldn't even come close to Reb Moshe. And he realized that he would have to find other people to do his work. Now every year, Reb Moshe would take himself out into the forest, once a year, and account for every single minute of the past year. And he was very strict with himself. And if he noticed that he hadn't taken advantage of every single minute that he was in this world in the last year, he would tear at his beard, pull his hair, throw himself on the ground, and make a very strict schedule of fasting and davening in order to get himself back on track and to be very disciplined. But if he looked at the past year and he saw that he had done everything he possibly could, then he would make a feast for himself and come home and celebrate with a big meal. And the prosecuting angel was aware of this and decided to take advantage of it. But for now, he would need somebody else to do his work. And not far away from Reb Moshe was a very poor Jew who had many children, and he made his living by collecting sand that was used for the floors in huts in those days. It didn't make very much money, and there was no birth control back then. And every year, his wife would give birth. But since they didn't have any money, and he couldn't afford to hire a midwife, the only thing he could do was sit next to his wife and say to Hillem and Davin until the baby came out. So the prosecuting angel was watching this, and the prosecuting angel decided to use the energy that was given to him by Hashem to cause this woman's birth to go longer and longer and longer. And on the third night, three days and nights of labor, she told her husband, Quickly, light a candle. The baby is about to come out. I need some light. 
But the man was so poor, he didn't even own a candle. And so he ran outside, and he sees his neighbor, Reb Moshe, is sitting and learning by a candle in the middle of the night. And he runs over and he grabs the candle, and he runs back home. But as he's running back to his house, he realizes what he just did. I don't even know who this guy is next to me. He's sitting there in the middle of the night learning with a candle, and I just stole his candle. If he's sitting in the middle of the night learning, he must be a tzaddik. What did I steal the candle for? I can go get a blessing from him. And so, the poor Jew goes back to Reb Moshe and he says, I see you're sitting here, learning in the middle of the night. You must be a great tzaddik. Give me a blessing that my wife will have an easy birth. She's in her third day of labor and she's suffering terribly. Please, you have to give me a blessing. And here's your candle back. And Reb Moshe said, what are you talking about? I'm not a holy man. I just couldn't sleep, so I lit a candle and took out a sefer. Doesn't mean that I'm a tzaddik. The other man said, listen, I also can't sleep at night, but I don't learn from a sefer in the middle of the night. You're not a simple person like me. And you know what? Even if you are, you don't need that sefer. And so he pulls the book out of Reb Moshe's hands. And he says, and you know what else? If you give me a bracha, it won't hurt either. I'm not going to give you your sefer back until you bless my wife with an easy birth. Reb Moshe didn't want anyone to know he was a tzaddik. So he goes and he tries to pull the book out of this poor Jew's hands. And the two of them are struggling back and forth. Ah, uh, 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 give it back! Until Reb Moshe realized this wasn't worth it. And he said, okay, okay, I'll give you a bracha. May Hashem bless your wife with an easy birth. Now give me back my book. And the man gave him back the book. And he skipped back home knowing that he had a bracha from a great tzaddik. And as soon as he gets home, his wife says, Mazel tov. The baby was born without any complications. The next morning, this poor Jew, he goes to shul. And he says, let me tell you, everyone, we have a great tzaddik living in our midst, and we didn't even know it. He lives at the edge of the forest, not far from where I live, and he has the power to bless anyone, and his brachas are fulfilled immediately. Let me tell you what happened last night, and he tells them the miracle. And you see, he's a miracle worker. His blessings can help us all. In the meantime, the prosecuting angel is watching his plan unfold. And before he knew it, Reb Moshe had a line of people outside of his door. <laughs> At first, it was just people that were coming with difficult childbirths. But then two times in a row, Reb Moshe's reluctant blessings became true immediately. And there were women that were having difficulty giving birth and they had healthy children. And after the third time it happened, people realized he wasn't able to just give brachas for her. women to give birth. He could give brachas for anything. And slowly, people started showing up at Moshe's door. And there was a line of hundreds of people waiting to get blessed by Moshe. Now, Reb Moshe was very confused and upset because he didn't want anyone visiting him. He just wanted to sit and learn Torah. And he told people, get out of here. I can't help you. But the prosecuting angel was given the power to influence other people as well. And he put into their minds that they have to stick around until they get a blessing from Reb Moshe. And people refused to leave. And at some point, Reb Moshe felt, you know, people are asking for such silly things. I'll just give them the blessing and they'll get out of here. And so he said, no, what do you want? This person would say he wants money. No, Hashem should bless you with lots of money. No, what do you want? I want to get married. No, Hashem should bless you to get married. What do you want? And he was just going one by one. No, what do you want? What do you want? And giving everyone a blessing. And they got out of there and he went back to learning Torah. But then, the next day, more people showed up. And this went on for a whole year. And then came Reb Moshe's personal day of reckoning. He went out into the forest, and he was seized by a panic. What did I do? How could I have spent this whole year hardly learning any Torah? This is terrible. I'm wasting my time. So he decided that this next year, he wasn't going to accept anybody. The first people that came, he threw them out. And later, he tried to deal with every person quickly like he did before. But before he knew it, there were so many hundreds of people waiting to get blessings from Reb Moshe that a whole year passed. And once again, he felt like he had wasted the year. He started tearing his hair and crying. And he said, what did I do? I wasted my life. I should be sitting and learning Torah. Instead, I'm dealing with all these people. It would be better if I was never born. Ah, the prosecuting angel had a big smile on his face. And he was given permission to appear to Reb Moshe, disguised as a tzaddik. And he comes to Reb Moshe and he said, Reb Moshe, you know, I've been watching all the people coming to you for years now. And I just heard what you said. It would be better if you weren't born. But why would you make yourself so miserable? Don't you understand that what you're doing is the whole fulfillment of the Torah? Wasn't it King Solomon himself that said a person should relieve himself of his burdens by discussing them with another person? And people get to share their problems with you and get a blessing from you. 
Doesn't it say, לא המדרש עיקר, אלא המעשה? Learning is not the main thing, but action? What better thing could you do with your life than helping your fellow Jews? You get to give people advice and help all these troubled souls. Since the whole world depends on chesed, loving kindness done for others, Torah study is not the whole point. You should be very proud of yourself. Look at how many people you've helped with your blessings. My advice to you is to set aside some of the time of the day to learn Torah. In some of the time of the day, you'll help the poor and the homeless and the troubled and the sorrowful. You give them advice, you listen to them, you give them a blessing. And when your blessings come true, everyone will look at you and say, this is a shining example of a true tzaddik that's clearly beloved by Hashem. What greater sanctification of God's name could there be? Isn't that the whole reason that God created us? And the prosecuting angel who was disguised as a tzaddik, he's going on and on, telling Reb Moshe, just keep going. And Reb Moshe was listening in awe. He'd never heard of anything like this before. And he went home that day a new man. And he told his wife to prepare a feast for him. He said from now on he won't turn people away. He'll learn a few hours a day. And then he will help all of mankind. Everyone is welcome to come to his house and get a bracha. And the next year went by very quickly. And Moshe found that that little bit of time that he had set aside in the morning to learn Torah was quickly being taken over by people knocking on his door. And he thought, you know, whoever that tzaddik was last year that came to visit me, maybe he gave me bad advice. And once again, he had his day of reckoning. And he totaled up the number of hours he spent learning Torah. And it was nothing for him. And he said, what's happened to me? I used to be on such a high level. And I've fallen to such a low place. And just as he was about to make a new resolution, the prosecuting angel shows up again, dressed again as the tzaddik, and he says, Moshe, you know, there's no one like you on the whole earth. There's no one more righteous than you. Who helps more people than you, Moshe? Who does more chesed than you? You think the great leaders of our nations could care like you care for people? You're on the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Moses himself. Isn't it true that Moshe descended from the mountain in order to speak with the nation? You also come down from your high level to be with the people. And that's why God created you. And eventually, the prosecuting angel convinced Reb Moshe with his smooth, silky arguments that he was doing the right thing. And not only that, he should rededicate himself and redouble his efforts on, on behalf of his fellow Jews. Just like Avraham Avinu, Abraham our father. And the prosecuting angel became a regular visitor and advisor to Reb Moshe. And every step of the way, he was guiding him down hill. It reached the point that Reb Moshe stopped learning altogether because he was dedicating all of his time to helping his fellow Jews, just like the tzaddik, the prosecuting angel, had told him. But then things got worse for Reb Moshe because when he first started, he was truly a tzaddik and he was giving people good advice. But then after many years of this, he became full of himself and he started giving dangerous advice. And he pretended like he could foresee the future. And he gave blessings that were foolish and turned out to be harmful and not helpful. And he lost his common sense because he thought he was such an important person. And every now and then, the prosecuting angel would show up and encourage him to do more and more. And one year, Reb Moshe's day of reckoning came, and he decided to skip it entirely. And at that point, the prosecuting angel knew that he had succeeded. And now he could finish it off without even pretending. And he showed up at Reb Moshe's and he said, you know, Moshe, I have heavenly connections. I can see what's going on in heaven. And let me tell you, because of your wicked advice, you have caused countless numbers of people to abandon their faith, to stop learning Torah and stop davening. You fall into a place where even if you spent 24 hours a day, every day for the rest of your life, you could never do tshuva. You could never be forgiven for your sins. your prayers would simply not be accepted. So I have some advice for you. Go out, enjoy your life, get rich, see the world, spend money, and have all the pleasures that this world has to offer. But Moshe, he hadn't given up yet. And he said, what you're saying can't be true. Doesn't it say that the gates of tshuva, of penitence, are never really closed? And the prosecuting angel said, yeah, but what about Acher? Acher's tshuva will never be accepted in heaven. Just as a side note for those listeners who don't know who Acher is, he was Rabbi Elisha ben Abuya, who was one of the great rabbis of the Talmud, who became a heretic. And it was declared in heaven that Acher was such a heretic that even if he did tshuva, even if he repented, his repentance would not be accepted in heaven. So Reb Moshe says to the prosecuting angel, so what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And the prosecuting angel said, I told you. 
Enjoy this world. You're doomed anyhow. So live it up. You can become a rich man. And Moshe said, what do you mean? I don't have any money. How can I be a rich man? And the prosecuting angel said, don't you know? Everyone around the world knows that you can make miracles. So now instead of doing it for free, you'll take a little pidyon, a little tadaka. And it won't take long for you to be very rich, way beyond your wildest dreams. And just like the prosecuting angel said, people continued to come. And Reb Moshe asked them to pay whatever price he'd said they paid. And his blessings came true. He could cure the sick. He could bless women that never had children to have children. He could make the poor wealthy. And even thieves were scared to touch his wealth because they were afraid that he was going to curse them. And he became extremely wealthy. And one day the prosecuting angel shows up and says, You know what? Fill your purse with gold coins and come with me. And I'll take you around the world. And I'll show you the treasures of every country, the pleasures of every city, and you will have a taste of life that you could never have imagined. The best of everything awaits you. Come with me, and I'll be your companion. And the two of them traveled the world with all the money. They tasted all the forbidden things that they never should have. And when people started to see that this person who was once a tzaddik was now doing things that not only a tzaddik shouldn't do, but nobody should be doing. And they stopped coming to him. And he didn't have any money because he spent it all. And the prosecuting angel came and said, No, what's going on? And Moshe said, I took your advice. But now people look at me and they say, I'm not getting a bracha from you. So I don't have any money. I spent it all. The prosecuting angel says, Oh, that's fine. You remember those days when you studied Kabbalah? And you used to even know a holy name that could perform miracles and even kill a person just by concentrating on that name and staring at the man's face? And Reb Moshe said, yes, of course, but what do you have in mind? And the prosecuting angel said, I want you to go to the crossroads. And when a coach from a wealthy person comes there, you stare at everybody in the eye and think of that holy name, and you'll take their souls out of their bodies. Then you can steal all their money. And so Reb Moshe went to the highway, and he tried out the prosecuting angel's advice, and it worked. And every day, he was making more and more money. And every day, more and more people were scared to come to those crossroads because people were coming in, but they weren't coming out. And at that time, the country was at war, and they needed to get money to the army. But the only way they could do it was to go through the crossroads where Moshe was taking everyone out. And all the soldiers were too scared to go there. Until finally, there was one brave soldier who said, I'll take a hundred armed soldiers with me, and we'll go through there, and we are not scared of anyone. And Moshe sees them coming. And he stands in the middle of the crossroads, ready to take everyone out. But the soldier pulls his gun and shoots Reb Moshe. And Reb Moshe falls to the ground. And the soldiers continue walking with the money, with all their horses and wagons, heading to the capital. In the meantime, Reb Moshe is laying there by the side of the road in pain. Now the prosecuting angel appears again. And Reb Moshe looks at him and he says, Look what you did to me. I used to sit and learn Torah day and night. Because of you, I've become a criminal and a murderer. And I'm laying here full of bullets by the side of the road. And the prosecuting angel said, You know, I can take those bullets out of you and heal you completely. But you have to become an atheist and reject Judaism and convert. And Reb Moshe said, Yeah, sure, whatever. I'm already such a big sinner. These bullets are killing me. They're so painful. Take them out. Just like that. The prosecuting angel took the bullets out of Reb Moshe. And Reb Moshe was healthy, just like he had been before. Now the prosecuting angel said, No, now you got to keep your end of the bargain. Renounce God and renounce Judaism. And Reb Moshe said, No, I'm not going to do it. It's true I've lived the life of a sinner, but I'm not going to die like a sinner. I would never deny the existence of Hashem, and I would never convert to any other religion. I have lived my life as a Jew, and I will die as a Jew. And as soon as these words came out of Reb Moshe's mouth, he was back on the floor again. The prosecuting angel had put the bullets back. And again, the prosecuting angel makes a deal with Moshe. And Moshe agrees, and they go back and forth and back and forth. But every time, Reb Moshe says, I'm not going to do it. Until eventually, he says, I'm not going to do it. And let me die. And Reb Moshe's soul leaves his body. And it goes up to the heavenly court. And he says to the court, look at what you all did to me. I was sitting there learning my whole life, and you sent this prosecuting angel to destroy my life. It's not fair what you did to me. No person could stand up to such a test like that. It's not fair. 
you have to have mercy on my soul. And so they decided that because of all the good things that he had done, he should go to heaven. But because of all the transgressions he did, he should go to Gehenom. But they decided to have mercy and put him in limbo instead. Not here and not there. And the Baal Shem Tov was telling the story. He says to his Hasidim, Today Reb Moshe's soul came to me when I was davening Shemona Yisle in Shul and said, Please, Rebbe, it's been 300 years since my soul left this world. Please, can you help me to get into heaven? And I called you, my Hasidim here, to celebrate this for Brengen, because today, Reb Moshe's soul was finally allowed to go into the heavenly realms and reap the reward for all the Torah and mitzvot that he had done. So this wish him a mazel tov and a lechaim. Lechaim! But to you, my sweetest Hasidim, never forget the lesson that we learned from Reb Moshe. Even if you think that you're on a high spiritual level, you have to ask Hashem all the time to help you not to sin. And no matter how far you think you've fallen, and you think you're so distant from Hashem that you could never come close to Hashem again, you should know that you can always do tshuva, that you can always come back to Hashem, no matter how far you've fallen. And remember as well, that filling your life with learning Torah and keeping mitzvot and helping our fellow Jews will be a life that's worthy of your soul coming into this world and being into a body. May we all be blessed to learn from the soul of Reb Moshe and to fill our lives with joy and Torah and mitzvot. Bye, bye. Thank you so much for listening, my sweetest friends. It really means so much to me. I hope you had a beautiful Pesach. And now we're counting up to the receiving of the Torah on the holiday of Shavuot. I want to thank the new supporters of this podcast, the Kunin family of Malibu, California, and their children for listening every week. If you would like to become a supporter of this podcast with either a monthly contribution, a yearly contribution, or a one-time contribution, you can do so by going to my website, HasidicStory.com. That's H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. And you'll see when you go to the website, there's a button, Become a Supporter. If you want to give a one-time payment, you can go to the top of the website in the menu, and you'll see there's a link there as well. I got a message from the librarian in North Carolina, one of the regular listeners of this podcast, wanting to know about the opening song you'll never know. So, of course, that's from Reb Shlomo. And the reason that I say it every week at the beginning of the podcast is that the stories are meant to inspire us. And you'll never know how this story might affect you. And you'll never know what you do, how it might affect another, hopefully for the better. So in the merit of all the tzaddikim, we should all be blessed to help our fellow Jews and to be inspired by each other and the stories. Thank you for listening, my sweetest friends. Thank you for all of your feedback. Thank you for sharing. And I look forward to our next story together.